Hello! The date for which you can first submit your MCAS application opened up earlier this week, so I figured it might be helpful for those of you currently applying or who will be applying in the future to see the complete application of a current medical school student, so let's begin! Alright, so to get started, as you can see up top, the submission date was in July because when I first applied, I had only applied to deal schools. I didn't know that I wanted to pursue MD until later on in the process, so that's why I applied a little later. That's obviously not recommended, you want to apply as soon as the submission cycle opens. And the rest here is just identifying information that I blocked out. And here I have my languages, so I'm still currently working on improving my Chinese and my Spanish, but that's something that's years in the making. And yeah, that's all for this section. But moving on to my academic record. So as you can see, I got a D in my math class, and you can also see that I had quite a few AP credits, which was very useful in terms of meeting the requirements for my general education classes. I didn't need to take as many, so I could move on to the upper division classes sooner. Um, but yeah, not, not great in terms of my math grade. I retook it and got a C-, minus, and I've kind of talked about this before, but that essentially precluded me from applying to schools that required math because C minuses don't count as a passing grade. Probably like a B average, I'd say. I had a random mix. And then I continued having that sort of trend. And then I also did not pass a education class that I did not realize it didn't drop in time. So this is my grade my first two years, around a B, maybe some Cs in there. And then starting junior year is when I started developing better study habits and you can see that I didn't really get C's anymore, mainly a B slash A student. And then that continued improving and in my post back, I got A's and everything. So you can see that there's been an upward trend. Here I went to UC San Diego for my undergrad and then I also studied abroad in Spain. This actually has a typo which is funny because I just realized that, um, Brisbane, Granada. And then I did my post back at some community colleges in San Diego, which I'll make another video about. And then my grade point averages, so BCPM stands for Biology, Chemistry, Physics, and Math. And as you can see, there's an upward trend throughout my academic record. And then the AO stands for All Others, so any class that is not BCPM. As you can see, there's a dip in my second year, my sophomore year. A friend, a close friend of mine took his own life, so my mental health was not very good at that time, and that definitely impacted my grades. But after that, you can see that there was an upward trend, and overall, this is my GPA if you combine the science courses as well as all others. Here is my MCAT score. I got a 66 percentile in the Chemical and Physical Foundations of Biological Systems, and I've heard that, that is the biggest indicator of whether you will do well in medical school. Obviously I did not do all that hot on this section, um, but so far I've passed all my medical school classes. I just finished my first year of medical school. So obviously you want to do well in every section of the MCAT, but you know, one score does not determine the entirety of your future. I did pretty well on the CAR section, also known as the Critical Analysis and Reasoning Skills, which I'll make a future video about. And then here is my extracurricular experience. Um, in no particular order, I'm not sure how they order this. Um, so first off, I had some shadowing experience. I personally actually shadowed PAs, which stand for Physician Assistant. In the past, now it stands for Physician Associate, but I actually shadowed um, MDs, DOs, PAs, and NPs because I wasn't entirely sure which path I wanted to pursue and I just put um, student observer of MD because this was the MCAS application. So the MCAS application back then, I believe it's the same now, but it allows you to include up to 15 extracurricular experiences and of those 15 you can mark three that you determine were the most meaningful and if you determine that this was a most meaningful experience then you can write some remarks about why this was meaningful to you, what you learned from it, etc. So as you can see the experience description, I did put bullet points I've heard various advantages and disadvantages to using this. Advantages being that it's shorter and more concise. 
especially if you had a lot of responsibilities and there's a word or character limit, it might be easier for you to be able to include everything if you put a bullet point. However, there's the flip side where you could argue that it's quite unprofessional to include this. And I've seen both arguments. I don't think either one will cause medical schools to deny you from an acceptance. But if you want to err on the safe side, paragraphs would probably be the best way to go. But anyway, so I worked as a back office medical assistant and I did a lot of BKGs, etc. And this was definitely one of my most meaningful experiences. I was able to start developing my bedside manner. Obviously, this is something that will be developing throughout the course of my career and the future, but this was something I got my feet wet in. Um, so that was great because I got to work with patients and get hands-on patient care experience. I learned how to work better under pressure, got better at multitasking, etc. So overall, this was a very meaningful experience. I would say the number one meaningful experience that I had in terms of medical experience. And then I also worked as a writing tutor. Um, so I personally am a huge fan of languages and writing. So this is something that I quite enjoyed. And then I was a photographer for the CSD Guardian, which is a newspaper at UC San Diego. And that's one of my hobbies as well. So that was quite fun. And I also got some passes for some events. So that was pretty cool. I also worked as a home health caretaker. So I helped an individual affected with quadriplegia get ready for bed. And sometimes I would also help him get ready for the morning. And this was also another one of my most meaningful experiences. I worked with him for about three years. And this was the longest quote unquote patient care experience that I had. And I put patient in quotations because I view him more as a friend slash mentor. And then I also was a fundraising chair for Triton Dance Marathon. So for those of you who have heard of Relay for Life, it's essentially where you run or jog throughout the night to raise money for cancer prevention and treatment. And Triton Dance Marathon or Dance Marathon in general is a similar concept, except instead of walking or jogging, you essentially dance for however many hours. And we did this to raise money for Rady Children's Hospital. I was also an English in action tutor. As I said, I really enjoy languages, so I enjoyed essentially helping someone improve their English. I was a volunteer for an organization called Muscular Dystrophy Association, so I was a camp counselor. I really enjoyed this experience. Many of the kids were super happy and they said that this was the highlight of the year, something they look forward to doing every year. And it's definitely an experience that I highly recommend to anyone that's interested in the healthcare field. I worked as a orientation leader at my college, so essentially I helped freshmen transition to the campus and to college in general. I was also a research assistant. I didn't do too much here, it was only about 50 hours total, but I essentially assisted with some EEG experiments, which is where they put electrodes on your head and record brain activity. And then I was also a Red Cross volunteer. Nothing extravagant, just helping out with blood drives, planning, things, etc. My last most meaningful experience was serving as a board member for UCSD Alpha Epsilon Delta, which was a pre-health honor society at my college. So I was a BLS slash CPR instructor, which was great because I was able to improve my public speaking skills, my ability to work in a team, and also my ability to explain concepts in a way that would be fairly easy to understand. And I also got to volunteer at a free monthly clinic in Tijuana, which was quite an eye-opening experience because many of the patients that I worked with at the clinic that I worked as a medical assistant for, not all of them, but many of them came from a more privileged background. So the juxtaposition between those patients and the patients that I saw at the Tijuana clinic who were pretty much all homeless and they didn't have access to healthcare. And we were able to see how much of an impact we were able to make because of the lack of resources available there. And I also was reminded of the importance of mental health and supporting patients. So as you can see in the application, I wrote about an encounter with a patient who will call Han, who came in with a chief complaint of having a benign tumor. However, when we asked him further questions, we were able to determine that his mental health was not in the best state because he had been struggling with deportation and with not being able to see his family. And after listening to him and hearing his story, he told us that he was very grateful because he didn't really have anyone to talk to 
and this was kind of a burden that he'd been carrying with him and it really reminded me of the importance of mental health because sometimes in the past at least when i thought of medicine i tended to think of actual medications or treatments and it's important to also remember that part of healing and part of health is also being there for patients making them feel comfortable and trusting you with their health issues making them feel like they're actually supported so that's something that I learned from that experience and definitely was very impactful towards my decision to pursue healthcare. And then I also volunteered as a physical therapy volunteer at the San Diego VA hospital. Also nothing extravagant here, just helping out with little tasks. And then I worked as a lab assistant. This is the lab through which I did autism research and I had one publication. And then moving on to my personal statement, I made a separate video about this. If you want, you can click the link above and I'll go over a little bit more of my thought process and review my personal statement a little bit more. And then we have my letters of evaluation slash recommendation. So as you can see, two of my recommendations were from a community college. I actually didn't really get to know any of my professors at UC San Diego. I think having professors at a university makes it more difficult to establish a more personal connection with them because of the sheer size of the class. So personally, if you're looking for letters of recommendation, I would recommend that you get yours at a community college if possible, because it's a lot easier to get to know your professors and vice versa for your professors to get to know you, not only as a student, but as an individual for whom they can write a good letter of recommendation. And then here is the list of colleges that I applied to. And I made a separate video on my results. So I'll leave that in the link above as well. And that is all for this video. I hope that you found this helpful and I will see you another Sunday. Until then, I surely hope that you take care of your health.